What's going on ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to 4 Strategy Gaming. I've got another StarCraft 2 commentary for you today. This game is going to be between FXO's T-Gun and Sterling. We are here on Shakur's Plateau. We can see here T-Gun spawning in the upper right position as our red Azuri player. And here in the upper left is Sterling as the blue Terran player. So Terran versus Azuri, this is going to be a single game between these two. I know I've been doing a lot of series lately. This will just be the individual game and I think I'll try to get a few more individual games uh, between varying players. So we can see right now T-Gun gun moving out with that overlord scout he will be actually heading right on over to sterling's base he should be there momentarily uh, certainly want to keep an eye on these players and see what they decide to open up with and all of that jazz now we did have the diablo cast come out earlier in the day so hopefully you guys have listened to and enjoy it we talk about a whole bunch of stuff that uh, has been going on in the past couple weeks some of the big news and in terms of starcraft content we'll be doing some commentaries and uh, hopefully working on some strategy videos today not sure if those will get up uploaded today it'll should be either today or tomorrow but either way keep an eye out for that so we can see right now t-gun moving out with his drone scout he will be heading straight on over and it looks like he is actually going to go right to sterling's base doesn't appear to be going cross positional i could be wrong no oh he is actually so he's actually going to be first going cross positional checking this bottom left position and then he'll be moving right on up into Sterling's base. We can see Sterling started off with the depot here right by his command center. Wanted to cut back on that not mining time and not wor not too worried about the full wall off super early in the game. Probably not expecting anything really cheesy from T-Gun, such as a six pool. Uh, T-Gun did scout out, realizing that the, his opponent Sterling wasn't there. will be moving on up and checking this upper left position where Sterling is in fact. You may wonder, why did he not check directly below him? Well, on this map, your opponent cannot spawn directly north or south of you. So that is why he didn't actually check that spot um, they can only spawn cross positionally or to your left or right so sterling taking a little bit of damage there from that drone scout then pulling on back with his scv he does have the refinery up right now getting that saturated first marine working its way on through back over here for t-gun we can see he did decide to open up uh first with that extractor then with that spawning pool you're going to see he will be floating at that hunter vespian pulling guys off the gas there's the last one there so we're sitting at that hunter to allow him to get that metabolic boost right away uh, those early game speeding speed links giving him a bit of map control at least until some hellions happen to come into play if that in fact is what sterling decides to do although as of yet we haven't really seen uh, that decisive decision made that decisive decision sterling is now coming out with the factory i uh, will be interested to see if he decides to drop a reactor here on this barracks as well firstly building that marine and once me once he gets that 50 vespian as soon as that's done he may very well drop that uh, did i call it an extractor drop that reactor there on the barracks back over here expansion is coming up right now at about 21 supply uh, looks like he'll actually be just getting that right at 20 dropping that hatchery first two zerglings moving out and actually opening up a six zerglings interestingly enough typically we're going to see two to four but, but deciding to get six he's going to be holding on to those zel naga towers and then moving forward in front of sterling's base to see if he can do a bit of damage looks like we aren't seeing that reactor here and he will just be opening up with that normal factory do of course expect those hellions and there we go that first hellion coming on through and still working on that marine count working with a quite a bit of espion right now even though it's just on that one refinery just because he hasn't gotten any attachments and or upgrades yet let's keep an eye to see if he decides to go for a starport um, but so far nothing really too too techy again no no attachments whatsoever on any of his buildings back over here t-guns expansion about 50 percent of the way finished the metabolic boost did just finish still no guys on the gas uh, popping out those overlords preventing those supply blocks absolutely fantastic one hell you didn't play and there is that expansion right now so coming out the expansion working into a tech lab and let's keep an eye to see if that's going to be tanks or blue flame hellions speedlings heading on back home they certainly do need to be careful against these marines and that one hellion it looks like sterling will be moving out against t-gun for a little bit of early game aggression shouldn't be too too much damage dealt here uh, but just trying to harass and you know even if he can kill just a couple of zerglings we got 10 zerglings coming on through though and that should be enough to overwhelm this t-gun wants to hold on to these four right now wait till the rest pop and then just engage with every everything because he will be able to overwhelm but not waiting and he might take a little bit extra damage because of this losing almost all those zerglings some nice micro there from sterling and that was a problem for t-gun he should have waited until he had all of his forces uh, he could have done a much better job of just getting a full surround there the zerglings mopping up the rest of those marines pretty much yeah the marines are gone all but one and then that hellions very low as well looks like the zerglings will be chasing them down so see you later to this marine trying to catch up to that hellion as well but it looks like the hellion should be able to make it back home no problem 
So Eaglings are getting pretty close though. Gonna be really, really close. He's looking to just barely make it. He's got one more Hellion and a Marine over here. It looks like the Blue Flames is is what is going to be coming out right now. Getting that full wall off right now as well, dropping down that rack. So a big problem with this is he will be forced to lift off one of these buildings before he can actually leave his base. Um, so yeah, I should I, I do expect this barracks to eventually get moved. There's no reason for him to keep that building there for, for part of his uh, normal wall. Uh, because as mentioned, he would have to lift it up every single time he wanted to pull a unit out of his base it's much much better to be able to uh, lower a depot so yeah he's probably gonna be moving on over into his expansion get that nice and defended and just work with that we do have a zergling that we'll be scouting out to see when sterling's expansion does eventually come out back over here roach warren here for t gun that blue flame has it just finished right now did we get a starport in play no we didn't uh, just actually coming out with an additional uh, additional factory here with the tech lab and start to work his way into siege tech here as well uh, so it looks like he will in fact be going a little bit mech heavy although it's about balance right now because he does have those two racks as well and um yeah as we can see he did lift off that racks over there because again he doesn't want that that building there as part of the wall off simply because as mentioned it's kind of a big hassle to have to lift off those buildings consistently so here we go blue flame hellings pushing forward right now uh, those zerglings are in a bit of a tough spot right now we do have those roaches about to pop right now zones move forward to try to get us around and they do manage to surround the one hellion should be able to take that out no problem a uh, second hellion might get sniped down by those zerglings some nice micro they're pulling that away and beautiful there beautiful roasted those zerglings and pulled back with those two get them repaired and you are all set we get nine kills for this one seven kills for that one Let's take a look at the unit loss tab right now T-Gun so far a wee bit behind again we do have Sterling here in the expansion they're on the same number of bases uh, this is something that T-Gun will want to remedy especially since he is so, so far in this game behind in terms of resources lost so he does want to work on that stronger economy or try to push out and do some damage although at the moment doesn't really look to be in the spot to do that he has just been macroing up I believe we do have that layer yes it has just started right there so layer coming on through once that is in I do expect that roach speed to come on through get that nice inject down there on that hatchery let's get those time timings little more solid there t-gun there we go <laughs> nice nice inject there for t-gun and he is moving out and looks like he will be dropping another creep tumor as well so trying to get a lot of vision here and spread that creep all the way across the map uh, the one frustrating thing though playing zerg is that you spend so much time and effort spreading this creep and then it takes a scan or two and it's completely nullified so we'll have to see though it looks like sterling will in fact be going mech heavy he's got another factory coming out there's that armory to start those upgrades as well as allow him to get those stores going to be very necessary if we do happen to see a transition in mutas here from t T-Gun. Now T-Gun's layer has just finished. So let's keep an eye on what he decides to do with that layer tech. We've got that third. It's going to be finished in just one moment. Again, spreading up that creep, getting some overlords out, a whole bunch of stuff going on. Uh, so in terms of what's going on here, you know, we see Sterling going for this mech heavy build. Uh, certainly want everyone to realize that, you know, mech is very strong, but also very, very slow. And this is something that T-Gun can exploit if he tries to be very mobile and harass a lot, uh, because it will be difficult for Sterling to defend himself against a very aggressive Zerg player who's harassing on multiple fronts, simply because, as mentioned, mech play is so slow. Having to wait for those Thors and those Siege Tanks uh, just takes a very long time, and we can see those Thors are coming out we have got that level one upgrade also dropping that engineering bay uh, possibly getting some upgrades for his bio though more importantly being able to drop some turrets as we can see those are going down to help defend against if any mutas come out also burrowed roaches and or burrowed infestors can be a frustrating thing to deal with as well so there we go creep spread going on expansion is up right now here comes that infestation pit so that is what he's making use of that layer tech with also again that roach speed and the baneling nest and should be seeing that centrifugal hook come out for those banelings as soon as that nest does finish over there so yes, right now uh, Sterling sitting on the two bases. We can see he's getting ready to move into his third. I will expect that to be over here. It's going to be a little easier for a mech player to defend himself in this corner position rather than trying to push that third all the way out to here and having to defend that third plus that natural expansion. You can kind of situate your units to defend both your natural and your third if the third happens to move over here. Uh, so yeah, that's exactly what I'm expecting Sterling to do. Here come those centrifugal hooks, pathogen glands as well for those infestors, allowing them to drop those fungal growths almost immediately after coming out um, after popping from that larva there and we'd have a few banelings rolling on in now again no aggression has really been brought forth so far this game we saw a little bit of early pushes there from sterling but besides that just been macroing up both players uh, working on their army size trying to get nice and bulky get a lot of upgrades there as well we've got a ton of tanks coming out sitting now on the four factories we can see we still have those two racks there but not really producing much at all uh, just a few marines to help supplement the anti-air uh, for the moment until he gets a couple more thors out or possibly just placing down some more turrets and there's another factory as well uh, so really dedicated to this mech play 
not going to be incorporating much bio into that at all. All right, so let's see over here. Looks like we have a fourth coming out as well for Tigon. So Tigon, if he can get this up and running, he's going to start to be in a solid spot. It looks like here we go. As mentioned prior, Sterling being able to defend his natural and his third by moving into this position. That is exactly what's going on. I, I do hope for a planetary fortress here um, because even with this nice positioning of these tanks, it'll still be difficult. I mean, the roaches and speedlings can just come up in this direction and completely avoid a majority of those tanks. So we do have a few more of those tanks pushing on over. I've got a couple roaches here. It looks like they will be working down those back rocks, then grabbing these rocks to provide that alternate route into this expansion. And yes, in fact, there is that planetary fortress, so that's going to help them quite a bit. Ooh, we do have the uh, the Carpus upgrade there coming off for those overlords, and then possibly even getting the transport there, the ventral sacks that allow them to do some dropping. As mentioned, being aggressive and consistently hitting from multiple angles is really the best bet when you're up against a mech army. It's going to allow you to do a lot of damage. Certainly walking into a siege line is the last thing you want to do, although again in this position Sterling is forced to kind of spread himself a little thin because again you can see if there's an engagement over here these tanks aren't really coming into play and if there's an engagement over here uh, most of these tanks aren't coming into play either so that's a that's the major concern. Also coming out there with that sensor tower allowing him to see any possible drops, any mute harass, anything like that. Certainly loving that. Uh, sensor tower is definitely a very strong Strong building, uh, certainly something that I think is a little underutilized, although it does cost 100 Vespian, so that's probably a major part of the reason why. T-Gun sitting right now at the Zelnaga Tower. He's got full vision as to what is going on over here at this expansion. He can see, okay, there's a tank line, there's a planetary fortress. A little bit of a scary situation. Certainly nothing he wants to walk all willy-nilly into. Back over here, T-Gun finally sitting up with that fourth expansion. We'll be working to get that saturated. Very, very heavy infester place. Some banelings in the mix and lots of roaches there as well. A bunch of upgrades, actually. It looks like Sterling will be getting ready to supplement his army with some of that bio. And actually, not more than some. Look at all of those racks there. Uh, so preparing to be able to have a nice health mix of bio as well as that mech play will begin the upgrade for his bio as well we can see that combat shield and stim pack would really like to see something like level one or the uh, the weapons or armor upgrade come out here for sterling uh, but yeah so far kind of a deadlock <laughs> these both players just again sitting idly and macroing up and uh, certainly doesn't make for incredibly interesting casting but either way um, hopefully this ends up resulting in something <laughs> thrilling at some point would really love to see some action in the not too distant future and we can see right now there we go very nice uh, creep spread there from T-Gun preventing Sterling from dropping down that fourth expansion and that's actually going to force him to bring down we can see unseaging all of his tanks oh he's getting ready for a push right now not even going to bother so he will be just pushing off of three bases first killing the Zergling uh, dropping the scan and oh no the siege tanks out of position right now need a siege up there we go fungal growth going down roaches trying to push forward splash damage though laying waste to all those roaches those infestors need to pull back that is far too strong of a siege line and just look at the amount of damage those siege tanks did even getting caught out of position uh, there were such a spread there they were able to siege up and just tear through all of those roaches We've got 66 Zerglings coming out. Spire as well as Neural Parasite here for T-Gun. T-Gun probably getting prepared to move his way up into Brewlords. We can see that Hive Tech is already in right now. Again, really loving this creep spread, delaying those expansions, those possible expansions there for Sterling. A couple of Roaches moving on up. Rogue Roaches pulling away from that t tank line there, and they should be able to do a bit of damage here, killing off a few SCVs, a few Marines as well. Roaches do very, very well against those Marines, and obviously tear through those SCVs without question either. Lots of Banelings will be coming through here from this mass amount of zerglings that were produced here comes that greater spiral the nerve parasite certainly going to be very very helpful against this mech uh, heavy style of play here that we are seeing from sterling and sterling's getting ready for another push right now and last time uh, certainly worked in his favor we can see right now again t-gun is still quite a bit behind sterling so far in this game and that scan allowing him to take out some more creep tumors cutting back on that vision there for t-gun taking a look we can see yeah he's lost quite a few and that certainly uh, hurts him quite a bit now we do have ooh, look at that the zergling grabbing that zel naga tower is giving him pretty good vision of this push that's coming forward in the tank line slowly encroaching one infester does get dropped over there t-gun really needs to be careful at this point again walking into that siege line can be devastating we've got an ultra cavern coming out that greater spire almost finished a couple mutas to try to snipe off these tanks and there we go gonna be dropping some neural parasites forcing the splash damage against his own unit feelings trying to run up the backside bailing's rolling in as well and these tanks fire against the same tanks of sterling and this is actually helping quite a bit uh, that their neural parasite certainly is gonna prove to be very, very beneficial taking the Thor there as well oh no and this is a problem Sterling just pretty much lost everything there we do see a scan drop trying to deal with some more of those creep tumors but my god he just lost almost all of his forces due to the power of these infestors very nice micro there from T-Gun this last tank does get taken out and right now Sterling's in a very tough spot 
will be pushed back to his base. He's not really in a position to expand right now. Again, we can see T-Gun uh, with that creep here is, has made it so that Sterling hasn't come out with any expansions. Uh, we do have some ghosts coming into play to try to combat this heavy infester uh, play here from T-Gun. Try to get some EMPs or even some snipes down on those infestors will help quite a bit. But right now, things are not looking too good for Sterling at all. Meter has moving on in. The Marines coming down to help with that. Um, take Losing a few of those SCVs there, but very, very nice. And it looks like beautiful play there. You can see that one engagement completely swinging things back into T-Gun's favor. Uh, so being so far behind the entire game, that one engagement certainly helped him quite a bit. And again, it can't be understated how nice that micro was. Grabbing those tanks, grabbing those stores as well, and then swooping up on the backside with all those Zerglings. I mean, so many of them took massive damage from that splash, but as soon as they got up on there and those neuroparasited tanks could fire back against the tanks of Sterling, that was the, that was really what ended that battle so very quickly. So very nice play there by T-Gun, and T-Gun sitting in a dominant position right now. I mean, he's got total map control. He's got the expansions. He's got the economy right now. Let's take a look here. Yeah, T-Gun's in a fantastic position right now. We do have some mutas moving across the map. We'll be trying to uh, catch any any outlying units, like even the small group of Marines. Those mutas could tear through them pretty quickly. We'll be moving right on up. First drop in that turret, then should be working right on that SCV count. And, uh, you know, Sterling does need to pull back, stimming up a few of those Marines. That's not going to be enough, though. Too many mutas uh, but for, for, fear of more, for fear of more Marines coming on in. Uh, we did see T-Gun pull back, but actually just moving forward, back and forth, sniping a few at a time, killing off a few SCVs here. Here comes some more Marines though. Does need to be careful. Looking to be a bit overpowering at this point. Uh, over here we can see Sterling again trying to move into this expo but having to contend with this creep spread from T-Gun and T-Gun's looking to be very solid right now making that transition into Broodlords and that's nothing that Sterling is ready for. This is a really big problem uh, for both Terran and Protoss come late game. If you do not expect or are not prepared for that transition into Broodlords, it can be a pretty tough situation for you. Uh, Broodlords can be so devastating, especially, you know, it appears that T-Gun uh, has very solid micro with these infestors, and that is really what is required to keep these Broodlords alive, because you can drop a fungal growth on any uh, danger to the Broodlord, and then provide that buffer with those Speedlings and Banelings as well, and that allows your Broodlords to do quite a bit of damage. And here we go right now, pushing on up. He's losing all those mutas but at the same time rolling up with those speedlings and banelings the infestors pulling from the backside as well we do have some uh, brew lords over there doing a bit of damage dropping an emp wow that was a lot of energy lost there for t-gun but he does dust off some infestors from the backside we'll be getting a few neuroparasites off at the same time brew lords over here dropping that ghost academy and it oh boy it doesn't look like he's actually gonna be able to take out those tanks quite as of yet we'll be forced to push back right now he will be dropping some infested terrans trying to take care of this orbital command over here but again look at these brew lords just going to town that's not Snipes going down on the Broodlords, those ghosts taking him out very quickly. That Broodlords gets dropped as well, and T-Gun throwing away his advantage right now. He needs to protect these Broodlords, not just throw them against uh, this army here and let them die. And look at that, the ghost taking out the last of the Broodlords. We've got a few more Speedlings pushing in over here. A couple of Infested Terrans doing a bit more damage, actually killing off those tanks. Uh, here comes some of the Ultralists as well. We'll be taking out those tanks, no problem. we got a few Marines in the back getting swooped up by those Zerglings. The Ultra trying to get within range and trying to do damage. We have all the infestors moving out here as well as a few speedlings and again Sterling looking to be in a tough spot right now uh, He doesn't have much of an economy at this point and he's losing a lot of units and here we go Those infestors actually moving down here. They were checking for an expansion though Sterling hasn't dropped an expo over here We would have been seeing some infested Terrans were there one in that position and look at this right now. Huge advantage going to T-Gun. We're going to take a look at the army supply. 95 as opposed to 36. Taking a look here at the income as well. So T-Gun really in a dominant position. Um, although he is a, a, almost even now. Sterling has uh, helped make up for the loss that he was uh, in, in uh, not too long ago. You know, when he took out those brew lords that helped him quite a bit. Uh, but still Sterling's economy is just hurting way too bad. And he's going to have a really hard time with this push here. There's tons and tons of speedlings. We'll be working up and trying to take out those tanks. Taking out all those marines. Getting rid of that ghost as well, forcing some splash damage against that. Uh, but these ultras are going to be a huge problem as well as those infestors. And look at that big fungal growth. We saw an EMP though, it didn't manage to get all of those, losing almost all of those SCVs. And there we go, Sterling just calling the G. Well, he didn't even call the GG, he just left. Opened up this game with a small marine hellion push and at the same time moved into an expansion. While T-Gun opened one base and then moved into his expo. Now as the push came out, uh, spotting it, he did build a ton more Zerglings. However, unfortunately he engaged with the smaller group instead of waiting for the rest. And as a result, took some relatively heavy losses early on in the game. And followed up his first push with a blue flame hellion attack and again was able to do quite a bit of damage. We're going to see some nice micro here uh, from Sterling and as a result managing to keep those hellions alive as long as possible killed off quite a few zerglings. 
After that initial attack, there was not much action for quite a while. Both players just macroed up. We're going to see here T-Gun sitting on four bases. While Sterling continued to pump out mech, prepare for a transition into Bio Heavy, and then moved into his third. We finally saw a push from Sterling around 17 minutes in game. Now we did see T-Gun manage to catch the tanks out of position and as a result was able to get a small jump. However, the tank line was so large and so deep, he was just able to tear through all of these roaches without issue. Just pretty much lost a bit of his bio and that is it, so that forced T-Gun to retreat. At 19 minutes, Sterling attempted to push out again, however this time T-Gun was ready. We're going to see those nice neural parasites there on the tanks, the speedlings and banelings swooping up from the backside, and because of this mind control here, he was able to do so much splash damage against that tank line, then t taking up a few of these Thors as well, and this was a really, really big gain here for T-Gun. He did so much damage, Sterling losing his entire army, he was set behind so badly. On top of that victory in the middle, T-Gun had a huge advantage in that he was sitting on five bases as opposed to the three from Sterling. With that huge economic advantage, T-Gun was able to simply throw his units at all of Sterling's expansions, harass the economy, and it didn't take much of it, it wasn't much of an issue at all simply because he had that very, very strong economy. And eventually Sterling, without enough of an economy, wasn't able to reinforce and was forced to call the GG. Alright guys, so hopefully you have enjoyed this first game. Thank you so much for watching. As always, if you like the content, please subscribe. Thanks again guys. Keep watching and keep owning.